Hey guys, I'm Ken. I co-founded and was CTO of Realbase, a company we recently sold for 180 million. Today I'm gonna discuss why most indie developers will ultimately fail and how you can set yourself up for the greatest chance of success. Let's jump in. So I recently saw a tweet on X from the legend Mark Liu. Now, Mark's an indie hacker who has been grinding for years and achieved some great success. He's an absolute legend, but his tweet got me thinking. So the tweet read, product market fit is like relationships. When it works, you'll know. Until then, don't get married to the first startup. Now, I understand where he's coming from with this tweet, and in all fairness, your first idea is probably not gonna be that good, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you why not getting married to your startup is actually going to be the reason why you will fail. The lack of focus is the cause and the reason why most indies will fail. The woman in the red dress comes along, as Hormozy says, and they see her and go, man, that's a way cooler idea. Now, before I get started and dive into that one, I wanted to tell you that I almost fell into the same trap. So after finishing my full-time job at Domain, I also saw a whole bunch of the big lads on Twitter and X talking about how you should be building 12 apps a year and just giving it a go and just testing out your hypothesis, punching out the ideas. And it seems really cool and everyone was doing it and I thought, $10,000 a month recurring revenue for a solo dev is pretty awesome, right? But I can see, and I'm gonna tell you why, that's actually not such a good thing. Now, firstly, why is it attractive to build many apps, as many as you can, as a developer? Now, for me personally, I love experimenting. I love trying out new technology. I love trying out the new idea. Every time an idea pops into my head, I wanna give it a go. I think of, you know, most of the fun in building businesses is thinking of what it can become. It allows us to create multiple new things, right? And experiment. So for me personally, you use a new framework. I try out a new, you know, get to try a new design, a new design system. It could be, you know, whatever. For me, it's a learning process. So it's very attractive, right? We don't have to worry about truly failing because what we can do is if a business doesn't work or an app doesn't work, we just write it off and say, that actually wasn't a good idea. So it wasn't me that failed, it was just the idea sucked. That just makes us feel good internally and kind of avoid the main problem. But the truth is, most apps can succeed if we put in enough iterations and keep working towards the end goal. There is a lot of apps that just variants on other ones and there are a lot of users out there and there's enough for all the players in the game. Now, what's the opposing idea to this? So instead of not marrying your startup and going around and trying out a whole bunch of different ones, we can come at approaches from a different angle, which is the concept of building one app and marrying that getting one business and marrying that idea. Now this comes from, and I guess best said by Alex Hormozy, right? And he tweeted this, the best diet is the one you follow. The best person to marry is the one you stay with. The best business is the one you stick with. The thing that makes these the best isn't the thing itself, but our commitment to it. Now this is very, very important, right? So it's not, like I said, it's not the idea so much that matters. It's about how much effort you put into it, how much you commit to that idea, how um, committed are you to making it succeed. When you have no other options, you will put in the maximum effort, all your brain power that you think, when you're thinking, when you're walking, when you're talking to people, you're thinking about the one thing. How can I make this work? Not how can I make these 12 things work? You're spreading your attention. We don't have that and big of an attention span to be able to do that. And we can't multitask. We can only really focus on one thing at a time. By getting married to something, it means that you stay the course and keep grinding and putting in the work until you achieve the result you're looking for. This does not mean that you do the same thing over and over again, because that's just insanity. We don't want to just be, you know, showing up and just doing the exact same marketing. I send a cold email, it's the same thing. I send it over and over just to different emails every single day. And I wonder why it's not working. I keep building the app with the same feature set, I don't talk to users and keep failing. Now that is not what I'm putting forward here. What I'm putting forward here is you find a customer or even better I feel sometimes is building for yourself and you keep iterating, find a pain and you keep iterating on that pain until it works for you. Keep using the tool, dog fooding in the business is we just keep, we use our tool daily possibly because that's what we want, something that, um, we use daily something like this is what Clipflow is to me is I'm building YouTube videos. I had a pain 
and it wasn't solved. So I'm building a tool to solve that. And by using it every day, I can iterate on that product until it works perfectly for me. And knowing that there are most likely other people in the, in the world that have the similar problem, right? And at the worst case, at the end of the day, you've built yourself a tool that makes you more efficient, right? So that is at the absolute worst case. When we keep iterating on a product and working with our users or working with our problems, we'll actually find that our business will look completely different by the time, you know, in four, five years. And I think this is where people fall apart is that long-term thinking. We all want things to happen overnight. I am 100% guilty of that. You can talk to anyone that I've ever worked with. I'm always like, why is this not moving fast enough? But I always have to come back and say, it's about doing the work, doing the reps, putting in the time, and things do take time. Marketing especially is one of those things that takes a long time. And if you keep jumping, you never ever dedicate enough time for a product to actually get out there. Now, why building many different things isn't the same as building one thing, all right? So these are my thoughts and my thoughts are when you build a bunch of different products, none of them are truly exceptional. You just can't dedicate enough time. Now, if I'm, I'm aiming my goal originally, was, which was a very good goal looking back, was to build four to six apps in a year, right? So I started out and I was like, this is the, this is the way, I'm gonna do it just like everyone else on, on X. The problem is you can't deliver quality. You can't really do that much in one to three months. We're talking 12 weeks. Now, if you have a full-time job, this becomes even more um, complex, right? You To build a product and actually give it a chance of actually working, you need to build something you know, like most of the time a land, a pure landing page is not going to give you that much insight. Most people are like, just to even market that landing page, you have to get in front of enough people to validate the idea. You could have a great idea with a landing page and never get it to enough people. And that just takes time, right? So it's hard to do that when you have six different landing pages you're trying to promote or six different little mini apps, right? Now, if you have apps that aren't fully executed, users can come in there and say, this thing doesn't solve my needs. It's not good enough. It doesn't have everything I want. Some apps are more complicated and they need a lot more features. And I think a good story of this is the Notion team, right? So they spent many, many years and almost gave up. I think they're up to iteration three, where they rewrote the app three times before actually getting success. Now imagine what that looks like if they were just like, we're gonna build this for three months and move on. That would have never ever taken off. Now, once we've also worked on our product, right? So we're iterating through, we're gonna build six different ones. Once we've worked on it for two to three months, we then decide to shelf, put it on the shelf and wait for something to happen. Look, let's be honest, nothing's gonna happen. You're not thinking about it, it's not, it's the code's getting stale, packages are getting old, you know, security's going downhill. Nothing's working, it's just sitting there doing nothing. Now, how is it gonna market itself? How are you gonna know what features would have been the killer feature? You're not talking to users for that product because you've moved on. You're never giving yourself a chance to succeed using this method. Like there are gonna be breakthrough mini apps that can happen and come across, but they're gonna fly by night because over time, if you're not working on that thing daily, that thing's just gonna get stale. Someone's gonna copy you most likely and you're just gonna go by the wayside because the person who's dedicated to their one product is gonna leave you in their dust. And that's the same thing with you. You're now creating a trail of subpar apps in your wake and nothing to really show at the end of the day. Now, I have definitely done this in my younger years. I used to jump from idea to idea every, and then, you know, I'd spend a bit of time on it. I'd then work, I'd think of another one. And this comes from a family of entrepreneurs who always have new ideas. And only as I matured later in life, I started to understand that I need to stick to one thing. And that leads us to the story of Real Hub. So Real Hub, which is the company that ultimately became Real Base, which we sold, started as a service for real estate providers. So these are companies that provide services to real estate agencies. So they make signboards, brochures, etc. We were one of these. We created signs and print material for real estate providers. We wanted to build a tool that helped us in our production workflow. So that is receiving orders, knowing where they are, quantities, et cetera, et cetera, shipping, that whole task and workflow, right? So we built a tool to do that. 
We then thought, hey, this is a great tool. Why don't we show it to other providers and see if we can create an ecosystem for all providers? You know, we felt like they were the underdogs in the industry and we should support them and build a great tool for that. What ended up happening was we took it to them and they all turned around to us and said, mate, you're dreaming. We're never going to use this. We've got our own tools, we already have our own workflows. We don't trust you. Uh, sorry, no thank you. Now, obviously, at that stage, we could have just said this idea is a failure. It doesn't work. What we set out to do is not what it, you know, no one wants it. So let's shelf it. Let's move on and find a new idea. But that's not what we did. Instead of that, we iterated and pivoted to moving towards the other side of the marketplace. So in the marketplace, you have a provider and you have a customer and a customer was a real estate agency. We created processes and tools that made our services business better. So we worked on that, so internal tooling, so we were dog fooding our product there. And then we also spoke to the real estate agencies and asked them what they wanted to see. How did, what features could we implement that made it easier for them? So things like we started showing pictures of signboard installs so that they didn't have to follow up with providers. So everything was inside of the app. We started implementing those tools. Over time, those real estate agencies became our main customer. And we started working with them directly once we had enough volume there, we were able to then force, basically force providers to be on the platform because they needed to, the real estate agent wanted to connect through our system to them. So by sticking to staying the course, getting married to our idea, which was Real Hub, we wanted to see this, our motto when we started was every real estate agency in Australia using this tool in some way, shape or form. That was our goal, right? That's what we set out for. We had to change who we targeted as we went along. But because we had no other option and we gave ourselves no other option, we st stayed the course. And ultimately after seven years, right? So we spent seven years working on one problem set. We built the ultimate tool that ended up controlling about 56% of every property that went through Australia. So it was a big road, but it gave us the winning formula, right? So su success came from doing one thing focusing on it all we did was live breathe real hub real estate signs and brochures and the f workflow and that's all we thought about so it gave us ultra hyper focus and that meant that we could actually go on to then sell this business at the end all right and it meant that when you have no options if you don't succeed and fail you have no money nothing left you give it all to the one idea and giving you that fire underneath you means that you will never you will never give yourself an option to fail because it's not it's the worst case scenario now contrast that to having many options who cares if one fails who cares if 10 fail if two of them work great it doesn't matter and i guess that's the story and it depends on what you want to achieve. I think a lot of people are probably happy with, you know, 10K monthly recurring revenue as one person is amazing and it depends on the lifestyle. But if you want to build a truly exceptional business that scales and leaves a real mark and makes you feel real, something that you can feel proud about, it takes a lot more work than that and a lot more dedication. So ultimately in business and building software, the lack of focus is the cause and the reason why most indies will fail. It's because something else that the woman in the red dress comes along, as Hormozy says, and they see, see her and go, man, that's a way cooler idea. I can use this stack here. That's a way better stack. I can use this new auth library. I can use this new framework. Um, it doesn't, you know, you're just jumping the whole time and you're never focused on solving one thing. Lack of focus also ends up costing you heaps of money. So have running multiple apps, even if they're small, and but you do put them in production, you obviously, you at least wanna have, you know, database backups if you actually take any of this seriously. That's gonna cost you money. So the more of them you have, the more money it's costing you. Whereas if you have one thing, it costs you one times hosting, and you can then take all that extra money and put into marketing or employing someone to do something and help you. So you can use your resources more wisely. When you go all in, there is nothing that can stand in your way because you have to make it work. There are no other options. And when you marry your business, nothing will stop you from succeeding because failure is not an option. Now, I hope that gives you a good understanding and where I come from when I see this. I'm 
just wanted to give I have do a video on this because I see this all the time. I see it indies giving up, you know, saying this pro I'm giving up indie dev. It's just not for me. It's not working. And sometimes I just look at that and I go, are you focused? Are you doing one thing? Are you focusing on just moving the ball forward every day? Find one thing, stick to it, keep grinding and it will pay off. So guys, catch you on the next one and keep cracking.